Agent Carter, Season 2, Episode 10, Hollywood Ending Thoughts. Another episode I love, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered in this video. Before I dive into it, I will just briefly say the I am probably going to be taking a break from Marvel TV until all of What If Season 2 has aired, which right now is looking like basically the end of the year. Pretty much, give or take a few days. Yes. Um, yes, so um, let's dive in. Yeah, so we jump back 60 seconds and we see what happened outside leading up to Dr. Wilkes expelling his zero matter. And let's see. Yeah, so... Uh, Whitney is delivering her big villain speech and then gets, you know, an, an embarrassing, you know, yeah, gets gets taken out in an embarrassing way. So, yeah, very, very Joss Whedon of them. She got Whedoned. But, yeah, it, it, I, I did like it. And the, the you know, oh, where's, where's Dr. Shambly? Where's the car? Sorry, got turned around. He is a screw up, you know. When it's not science, he's oh, you know, yeah, he's always screwing up if it's not within his his area of expertise. Let's see. I, I mean, how how do you get turned around in such a small area? You know, it's just yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, Manfredi, you know, tells Whitney, you know, let's let's go out and get something to eat. Meanwhile, she's like, no, I want to finish, which, ladies, you've been there before. And the, yeah, so they're, you know, this time, you know, she wants to open a door and, you know, keep it open, which I gotta say very much reminded me of the first Avengers, you know, it opens with Loki getting to Earth through the doorway and ends with him opening up a portal, you know, basically that could have stood there forever. And... Yeah, Peggy does not believe that Howard is doing this out of the kindness of his heart. She thinks that he would try to make money off Zero Matter. And we have the great line, That stings, it'll heal. And... <laughs> I didn't see coming that Manfredi was going to work with... You know, he, he got... He's, He's got Jarvis at gunpoint. And then, you know, there's that line about you you can't take a man's underwear. And then he just yeah, and he's like, hey, you guys. <laughs> I guess it's good that he managed to like he very nearly got himself shot by Peggy. But he did say, you know, if you shoot me, I'll shoot you know. If I see a gun, I'll shoot Jarvis. But I do 100% believe that Howard would socialize with a mobster. And, yeah, you know, he's like the... It's... I want to save Whitney. You know, she's not the same. Because of the zero matter. And... Let's see... Yeah, you know, I mean, should, you can see where this is going. The writing's on the wall. And, yeah, very clever to take some, some pictures of the writing. I will say, I guess maybe it was like um, a misdirect or something. The moment that I saw Sousa take a picture of Peggy, I thought they were going to have to leave in such a hurry that they'd end up dropping the camera on the way out. 
Whitney would find it and realize it was Peggy because of the picture. And <laughs> so Manfredi tries to get Whitney to, you know, intimidate the one of, one of the guys working for him. And, you know, yeah, at first he's like, no, I'm, what are you talking about? I work for you. But then apparently he has been approached by the feds and is now working for them. <laughs> it's like, I mean, there's, yeah, there's a certain percentage chance that that's true. And I guess it's, yeah. And, yeah, they get out just in time. And the, yeah, the three scientists have gotten the machine to work. And now they're arguing over naming. And, you know, Peggy, you know, says Rift Generator. And they're like, ah, oh, we should have thought of that. Uh, gentlemen, I'd like to postpone Armageddon. I'm not quite ready to cancel the apocalypse. Or end this war. And, yeah, so they're going to go to the studio lot, which is quite clever. The, you know... No one's gonna come around there, you know, suddenly, and Howard can just give everyone the day off. <clears throat> you know, he makes these sudden decisions all the time. People are used to it. And... Let's see. Yeah, so Howard is flirting with Rose, and it seems to be going better than Samberly, so I guess the joke wasn't Rose is impervious to flirting, the joke was Samberly is bad at flirting. Yeah, not the, not not really gonna miss Howard, you know, womanizing, particularly. And... Let's see... Um, Dr. Wilkes makes a reference to going on an apology tour. And he points out, you know, the reason it was her I held at gun gunpoint and not you, Sousa, is that I knew that you would not let me shoot her because I wouldn't have let you shoot her. And I, I like, <laughs> so Thompson comes in, not a scientist, but I want to help. What can I do? And Peggy suggests he collects dinner orders, which is the kind of thing she used to do before she got respect back in the season, at the start of season one. And, yeah, he can appreciate, okay, fair enough. <laughs> that's, yeah, haven't, didn't expect to be on the other side of this, but that's really, yeah, fair enough. And... Then we have the. <clears throat> Damn, what am I doing wrong, Jarvis? Sir, we are standing before an incomprehensible rip in the fabric of our world. Use the seven iron. And. Let's see. Yeah, and I also quite like. You know, Peggy says. Whitney's a genius, but she can't decipher it. I don't speak megalomaniac. Fortunately, Howard Stark does. And... Let's see... <clears throat> yeah, and Whitney arrives right behind Samberly for a show that up to this point has had very convincing special effects. It is a little disappointing that here at the very end, when, you know, the, the portal itself still looks great, the, the rift, but when the, the zero matter is like leaving her body, being pulled into it, the zero matter was not quite convincing. I, I don't know, maybe they ran out of money and or time. And let's see... Yeah, they managed to, to get it out of Whitney and arrest her. And, yeah, they, you know, they have to turn 
they're going to try to, you know, manually stop the machine. But in order to do so, you'd have to take the highway to the danger zone. And, yeah, um, Sousa does get there and is, like, cranking it like there's no tomorrow. But ultimately, it doesn't quite... That doesn't end up being how they do it, you know. And they blow up the flying car to, to stop the... Yeah, very, very clever... And let's see, yeah, so with with the major danger resolved, you know, Howard hires Dr. Wilkes, which does make a lot of sense. You know, he can appreciate talent, and he's not really, like, he's, he's kind of a misogynist, but he's not, like, racist. And... Yeah, so Anna, you know, Peggy was going to leave without saying goodbye because she wasn't sure that Anna wanted to see her. But Anna thanks her for, you know, making sure Edwin is still alive. And Peggy was going to take a taxi and, and Edwin just looks like, like, he's almost as sad as when he learned that his wife can't conceive. Like, it just, it destroys him. And she's like, oh, okay, sure, I'll, I'll, you know. And, let's see, yeah. And we see that when Whitney, yeah, certainly right now, seemingly all of the time that Whitney talked to herself, she was imagining Calvin there. And, you know, she's now in this mental institution and she's imagining herself being in a, a more pleasant place, and we learn, you know, you can't give her roses because every rose has its thorn, and she's just going to use them to try to, to cut open her face because she feels that that's, you know, she, yeah, she's been so used to the the thing, the, the zero matter. So this is a very, very ugly, very ableist depiction of a mental health you know breakdown and yeah i i really i don't think it was at all necessary i i much preferred i, th I think it would have been a lot better if it had ended the same way as season one with just you know something put in place to prevent using the although, although yeah okay so at this point she didn't have powers anymore i don't know maybe like they won't let her they're they're so convinced that she's going to if if she has access to like pencils and paper she's going to you know so so like joseph is bringing you know is, i i think she might be in need of a new pad i i got her a new pencil and the 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 guy says you can't let her have that you know this is look what she did last time she had one of those and you know that would be a punishment, you know. I I get it. They're they're doing that thing where a really, you know, villainous character has a, a comeuppance, but mental health problems should not be used as as like a punishment like this. And you know, sadly, like it might make people watching this episode <clears throat> think less of people in real life who have mental health problems, which continues to be a really big problem. There's a lot of people who don't have very much empathy for people like that. And, yeah, so, um, I haven't been sure about bringing it up until now. Um, but yeah, in the, the comics character that you know, um, she is Madame Mask, um, the, let's see, and I forget, yeah, yeah, in, um, in the comics, the, the name Whitney Frost is also, yeah, refers to, uh, Madame Mask, and, <clears throat> I will say, like, it took me a little while 
I, I kept expecting her to put on the iconic mask, but I get it. It is this thing of like, well, would that really work in this sort of, you know, so yeah, I get not doing, doing that. Um, yeah. And you know, like the, the, um, there's some major differences between the, the comics version and and this one, um, I I did really enjoy her. <clears throat> oh, and she. This is not the only appearance. And Win Everett, who played it on this, also plays it elsewhere in in Marvel. So that's that is very cool. I I one hundred percent. Yeah, I. Yeah. Oh wow! I, huh? Oh no, oh, never mind. That's not it. Ah, I thought it was one of the Marvel games. I haven't played very many of the Marvel games, but I've really loved the ones I have played. But no, that is not one of the ones. And anyway, but yeah. Um. You know. I I really really love what I've read of her in the in the comics. Um. But yeah, um, I think having the the scar was a good way of like you still have something that she conceals of her face, and I'm not gonna claim like if you changed nothing else, but throughout she's wearing this this like golden colored mask covering her entire face. Yeah, that's that's not completely going to work. You'd have to change other stuff around to accommodate. This is not really a universe where you can completely get away with something quite that comic booky. As much as I love what how it looks in the comics, but yeah, I I do appreciate you know some of the really important aspects of Madame Mask is her intelligence and independence. And that I feel like they did a really solid job on uh, this season. And I, I will say one thing about her talking to Calvin, Im imagining him, you know, she's been talking to herself for several episodes now. I guess all of that time she was, you know, this is supposed to be like the, pay the big payoff, the reveal. I didn't think that she cared that much about him. Maybe it's a sort of, of guilty conscience having... You know, manifesting is, yeah, <clears throat> and yeah. So Peggy talks to to Edwin, and you know he's he's trying to get her to stay in L.A. She says, "My life is in New York." Points out all the stuff he said against L.A. And yeah, um, it was it was fun when. Sousa confronts Peggy that, you know, okay, so you told me that I should have let you die. You didn't let me die. This is, you know, this is a screw-up. You know, you are not being consistent, Agent Carter. And just, yeah, the, and it culminates in them kissing, which, of course, resolves the love triangle. You know, she had a chance to kiss Dr. Wilkes. You know, they, they had breakfast, I want to say, together at Howard's. You know, so, yeah, she's she's made her choice. And, and it's one of those, I, I, I'm not the biggest fan of Love Triangles. I think sometimes they can be great. This was one where, like, no, really, whichever one she chooses, I'm going to be like, that's great. I You know, they're great together. But, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm not, the, <clears throat> not the biggest fan of this thing of like, oh, you know, unrequited love, but it led to a relationship. You know, I, I don't think that's the healthiest message to put out there. I think it's better when fiction is like, you know, okay, so unrequited love sucks, but there are other, you know, there's, there's other fish in the sea. And let's see. Yeah, and and we close on Thompson being shot and the the assailant, the assassin retrieving 
the uh, forger forged report and yeah you know the um, Vernon Master it did not die with Vernon Masters you know there's someone else out there some people really hate that this you know I'll, I'll there's this there's this reddit on the specific board for this show you know the um, let's see yeah so basically you know people knew that the show was getting canceled and they you know yeah it's frustrating that they chose to do a cliffhanger they they were basically they were hoping that the cliffhanger would be so you know attract so much attention that they would feel like oh we we have to give it a third season you know i'm not the biggest fan of that i really don't think that the cliffhanger was so bad like this is nothing like an alias cliffhanger you know yeah i i wish that they hadn't done it because it really like snip snip and it's out of there you know you just you don't have to show that last bit or you can just have Thompson just leave, you know, but I it's it's not something that like ruins the show, which is obvious, you know, when 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 a show is canceled before it's finished, you you really don't want them to just leave a lot of stuff unresolved. This resolved almost everything. There's really just that one like this plot thread and um yes so mdb trivia um for this episode the cinema marquee seen in the background when peggy has her last conversation with jarvis is a redressed version of the one seen in whitney frost's flashback set in 1934 from smoke and mirrors and see, yeah, Howard Stark's flying car from Captain America 1 makes a reappearance. This time it's the fully functional Mark II rather than the prototype scene in that film, which did not fly, and where he says, you know, I did say a couple of years we'll have them. In both the Marvel comic universe and on the show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., flying cars are used by agents. In the comics, they're manufactured by Tony Stark. And. Let's see. Right, and yeah, in, in the goof section, someone points out, you know, someone said, well, you know, Sousa has that line, that's the $64 question. That was an NBC radio quiz show that debuted in 1950, and this episode takes place in 1947. However, the phrase originated on the game show Take It or Leave It, which premiered on CBS radio in 1940, continued its run until July 27, 1947, shortly after this episode is set. When it moved to NBC, the game show changed the title in 1950 to the $64 question. So it is not an anachronism. And I think that might be about. So, yes, um, I will record the spoiler free review momentarily so that it's, I'm not sure they're gonna it's probably gonna look like they were uploaded one right after the other certainly you're not gonna have to wait yeah I'm probably not making this video public until I've already uploaded that one and yeah really gonna miss they couldn't fit in just one more scene of Angie and yeah Really gonna miss Dottie, Whitney, Peggy, Angie, probably some of the male characters as well, but especially those. Yeah, um, I guess it's not impossible that they could do, like, on Disney Plus, have a thing that's set around the same time. Like, the actors are still alive and. I'm sure at least some of them would be happy to reprise their roles.
but yeah, I'm really glad that they did. You know, I, I really prefer when shows do this where the end of a season will resolve the plots of that season. And yeah. In closing, I leave you with Howard explaining how the most successful scientists achieve greatness after Edwin's just giving you a history, drinking copious amounts of alcohol, and commoting with loose women. That's a good guess, but it's wrong. Nope. They get smarter people to do their research, and then they steal it for themselves.